Hi everyone, here we are in Building C, in one of the most exciting projects in the whole town deal uh, vision. Can you just describe to the viewer, what, what you give them a sort of guided tour of what we can see here? Um, well, we started construction, we're in the construction phase, so we've got to talk about Beckery Construction Company. This is um, a subsidiary company to Red Brick Building, Community Centre, um, and what we wanted to do was to deliver the project locally, spend the money locally, um, and have apprentices at the heart of what we were doing. Um, and we formed a, an excellent local construction management team. Um, and we're currently doing emergency repair works prior to getting the planning application. And where have you drawn those apprentices from? Um, we're partnering with an organisation for Train for All based in Somerton. Um, they've helped us a lot. We've um, identified four or five apprentices have taken on two so far. So Lisa and Matt have come here uh, and yeah, they're a good part of the piece. And what, will, what are the opportunities of the young people here in terms of the construction as it develops in this, on this site? There's a number of different construction trades and we, at the start, we want apprentices to touch in on all of those before, so they understand what it is that they want to do before they specialise. We're looking at a two-year construction apprentice training. Yeah, at the end of it, they'll have a qualification and they'll be, be able to open their own business and take it from there. So that's, you know, a big part of what this is all about, whether it's at the construction stage or once the doors have opened, that um, local youth can learn how to set up a business for themselves in what it is that they want to do. That's a fantastic opportunity, Rob. And what about the opportunities for local suppliers in the, in the wider community for delivering products or services into Building C? Um, well, we've set up, so whether it's going to be a volunteer or an apprentice or uh, an individual sole trader that lives locally, or local subcontractors or local suppliers, basically we demonstrate that we can do something of high quality and we can do it uh, under budget and within time uh, and it's local. That's, that's the way things are going at the moment and that's what we want to demonstrate. Fantastic. And can you sort of show us around now, briefly? Absolutely, yeah. So Rob, this building was last in commercial operation almost 40 years ago. So you've, you're managing 40 years of gentle dereliction. And this is now going to be the new entrance. Can you sort of walk the viewer through a little bit about what they can expect in the next few years when it's finished? What better way to come in but through the community garden? Uh, and we, we're, we're one mile here from Glastonbury High Street. We're hoping to have a green route, a multi-use green route through to the high street to connect all the Beckery projects up with Glastonbury High Street. Um, this will be the new main entrance red brick building. Uh, you come through here, there's going to be a, a, a full-time reception on the right-hand side and a shop. Folk are going to be able to come in here and learn how to make things and they're going to be able to see them sold in the shop. So that's kind of, you know, a good part of the piece. So that's a, that's a commercial opportunity for anybody de developing an art or craft type business, giving them exposure to the public and also a, a potential revenue stream for the sale of those, those products. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's an incubation space. So if yeah. you can imagine if you've never created something before, you can come in and, 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 and start to learn how to create in whichever area it is that you're looking at. And we're looking at <clears throat> modern media as well as old artisan skills. Um, and you can imagine putting that creation in the shop and seeing it, seeing someone coming in and wanting to buy it and taking it away. You know, it's a very important part of the piece and being able to see it. Fantastic. And, and the connection with the high street is important because that will give people with mobility issues or buggies or bikes access down here without having to go around the sort of the main road network and park up and everything. Well, yeah, we, we imagine a new Glastonbury creative quarter in Beckery and there's uh, a lot of the town's from money has been spent down here uh, and it, it makes sense that we have, um, we connect it up and we've got a car route and bus route but we need, whether you're on, you know, pushing a pram or on your roller skates or on your skateboard or walking or running, whatever it is, that we have a multi-user path for folk that can come down into Beckery. It's only a mile away uh, and if we make that a, um, yeah, a really nice place to walk. That's what we're talking about. And one of the great joys of being here as, as, as a self-employed artisan craftsperson is you're working communally, aren't you? You're not on your own, you're not isolated in your own home or 
you know, you're actually sharing the space with others and that, and that in a way develops creativity and develops commerce, doesn't it? Well, it's part of upskilling. People mm. can share, people can learn on their own, but people can also uh, share skills at, mm. at every stage of the learning. So, um, yeah, it's an essential part of it. So, Rob, the Morlins building has been a hugely significant part of Glastonbury's industrial history. And you are going to keep some mementos of that, the, the, the structure of the building, obviously, and other parts of it that remind us of its history and its heritage. Yeah. Well, we know a lot of local folk have worked here or have relatives that have worked here. Um, so the first thing we want to do is keep as much as of the building itself as possible. So, for example, the Morlands Gate? We've got three of the Morlands Gates from the original factory and we're going to yeah, find a, the best place to um, put them back into the scheme, put them back into use. And you had an exhibition here a few weeks ago where many um, towns residents came in and told their story of working here so they must be very excited that the next generation and maybe their grandchildren are going to have an employment opportunity here oh exactly i think you've said it that's mm. right being able to tell the story and keep telling the story is essential and we we um i'm not sure how it's going to look yet but the the heritage part of this place is really important to us thank you so shall we wander in and have a look at the the site as it's being developed so what have we got here? This is going to be the main entrance. This is the main entrance of the project. Um, so walk in the front door and you're going to be met by, uh, this is going to be the reception to the building. Uh, behind that there's going to be a shop. Okay, so on the left hand side, this is the main corridor through the building. Community canteen is going to be through at the end there. Uh, but on the left hand side here, we're going to have Glastonbury FM with two radio studios, um, a student learning space and an office, and behind there a welfare space, so a group, group room where people can gather and also a one-on-one -on -one space as well. So Rob, should we go upstairs and just see what's happening on the first floor? So, Rob, can you explain to us what's happening on the first floor here with all these sort of joists and ground floor timbers going in? So, all, all the primary structural elements in here are timber. Um, all the posts are oak, all the beams and the trusses are pine. Um, but the roof has been off for a lot of the last 40 years. So, there's a lot of rot. Um, we're trying to keep, we're going to, well, we're keeping as much as we can, but the bits we can't keep. Um, are being replaced at the moment, so that's what you can see is going on at the moment, is getting the, getting the first floor re reconstructed. Yeah, and so ultimately what will this become when it's finished? Um, in the final scheme, we want to keep this as open plan as possible, um, just with the idea if you can see it being done, then you can do it. Um, around the outside, we're going to have um, artisan spaces, so individual um, artisans and small businesses um, set up around the outside. And then through the middle, we're going to have different um, workshop spaces. And how have you met some of the biodiversity challenges you've faced as you've done the reconstruction work? We've got bats. We've got four species of bats here. We have uh, a specialist ecologist with First Ecology. Mm. Uh, they've come in and um, they're basically holding our hand through the process of uh, bat mitigation licences and explaining to us what we can do and when we can do it and keeping an eye out for the bats along the way. Mm. So yeah, all part of the process. So it will all be integrated when, when the, the building is finished, there'll be a, a bat safe area for... Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we have bat boxes, <laughs> which will be put up on the outside of the building. Uh, and then over in the corner where with the old filter tower, we can have a um, large bat room for yeah. one of the species of bats has to fly into a room before it can roost. Oh, so yeah. so the, the bats are gonna be part of the community. Part for some time to come. Yeah, fantastic. Rob, just tell us what we can see here and what, what the plan is for this, this part of the building here that's exposed at the moment. Um, well, the, we've had to build a couple of bridges to get any horizons out of the building uh, over the mill stream. Um, that's the gable end of building B. So that's the yeah. existing artisan space and the yeah. event space underneath. Uh, and then the basement in the boiling room and, under there. 
this is the only bit of um, of the building which is going to be fully demolished is this little brick room up on this brick pier here that's going to come down and there's going to be a stairwell there for circulation and fire escape um, and then this is going to be where the community canteen is brilliant okay so and, and that will be open, open out onto the onto the little ream here will it then or it'll be it'll be completely enclosed as a sort of sealed unit uh, we're still figuring out the details because yeah. we want some areas where toddlers can be and parents yeah. can keep an eye on, on them and you know these different things so everybody has a chance to have their own space in the building. so it's accessible and friendly to everybody in the community whatever their age absolutely yeah That's fantastic are you confident that we're you know it's, i mean it's such a huge project this to, to get your head around that it's on target for the finishing at 2026 and um, we're aiming for spring 2025 to open the doors um, we're going to try and improve on that, but that's what that's what we're looking at. So yeah, we look forward to seeing this project as it evolves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Thank you for your time. Thank you.